guys, so today we're going to do a summary video of the things that we've learned from the past three to four videos that I published about iron and hypochromic anemias. And so, yeah, so if you are cramming for an exam tomorrow, hopefully this video will help you because I'm gonna stress out on the things that are probably gonna be helpful for you to prep up for an exam. You know, it could be a hematology exam or the ASCP, whatevs. This is gonna be a good refresher for the things that you should remember when it comes to hypochromic anemias. Okay, let's begin. Look at the CBC and peripheral blood, the overall picture. Sometimes they're gonna give you a case study of a patient and they're gonna tell you, oh, the RBC is decreased. So please memorize the normal ranges for those as well. So RBC is down, hemoglobin is down, and so the patient is having anemia. And so what kind of anemia does the patient have? So look for keywords, okay? So for iron deficiency anemia, again, this is a cramming session, so I want you to remember things that are important. So for iron deficiency anemia, everything is decreased, okay? Your MCV, MCH, MCHC are decreased, and the only thing that has increased is the RDW. Remember that. Iron deficiency anemia equals decreased. And then anemia of chronic disease, they're probably going to mention a chronic disease. And aside from that, they're going to say the ranges for MCV, MCHC are kind of normal to decreased. And so remember those ranges. It's not really that hard to remember MCV, MCH, MCHC. Those are just three parameters and they're kind of sort of related to each other. So it's not that bad to memorize those. And so there's also no aniso, no poikilo. It's probably anemia of chronic disease. And the third one is sideroblastic anemia. And your keywords for that is basophilic stippling and presence of ringed sideroblast. It can't be any more clear. The ring sideroblast, sideroblastic anemia. And so that's that. So just in the top of my head, I'm going to mention again the normal ranges for MCV, MCH, MCHC so that we remember it together because this is a cramming session. <laughs> so for MCV, 80 to 100 is normal. Okay, the unit is FL. So 80, I think it's femtoliters, yeah. So it's 80 to 100 femtoliters is the normal range. So less than 80 is microcytic, okay? It's small. So these are hypochromic microcytic anemias. And then greater than 100 is macrocytic, or they're big. They're bigger than the normal RBC. Because MCV gives you the size of your RBCs, gives you a, a rough estimate of the volume of your RBCs. So for MCH, it's between 27 to 31 picograms, PG. So 80 to 100, 27 to 31. And then the MCHC is 32 to 36%. So just remember that if it's less than 32, so I think it'll, it'll do you better if you just remember that if it's less than 32%, it's hypochromic, okay? Your cells are gonna be hypochromic. So for IDA, you have microcytic because your MCV is decreased and your MCHC is also decreased. So it's hypochromic and microcytic anemia for IDA. So that's that. Memorize those ranges, please. So again, MCH is 27 to 31 picograms. MCV is 80 to 100 femtoliters. And then MCHC, if it's less than 32%, it's hypochromic. Let's move on to iron studies, because the iron studies differentiate these anemias even more. So let's memorize ranges. Okay, so for iron studies, let's start with serum iron. So we're going to try and memorize these ranges because, you know, you never know. Some of your professors may be a bit forgiving and just say, oh, serum iron is decreased, the IBC is decreased, or some professors might give you an actual range and you don't know if that's decreased or increased. So let's just memorize the range just to be safe, okay? So serum iron is the transferrin-bound iron. And for males, it's at 65 to 170 micrograms per deciliter. And for women, it's 50 to 170 micrograms per deciliter. While for TIBC, which is the total iron binding capacity, it's between 250 to 450 micrograms per deciliter. 
and 4% transfer in saturation, males are at 20 to 55% and females are at 15 to 50%. So as you can see, you just minus 5. So for males, it's 20 to 55 and then minus 5, it's down to 15 for females and 50 for the upper limit. And then for ferritin, it's between 20 to 300 micrograms per deciliter. So you can choose to memorize a different range for ferritin because there's another more specific range for males and females. But for the sake of cramming, I wanted to choose to just memorize this range. It simplifies a lot of things. So just remember 20 to 300 micrograms per deciliter instead of like memorizing the individual adult male, adult female range. Again, Let's talk about this again because I think ranges are hard to memorize. So I'm going to repeat it again. Okay, so one more time. For serum iron, males have 65 to 170 micrograms per deciliter. And then for women, it's only 50. So you minus 15 from the males. It's only 50. And then same upper limit at 170. So serum iron is 65 to 170 for males. And then for women, it's 50 to 170. For TIBC, it's 250 to 450. Okay, 250 to 450. And then for percent transfer and saturation, males have 20 to 55 percent for normal range. And then for women, minus 5 for both ends, it's 15 to 50 percent. 15 to 50 percent and then lastly for ferritin it's 20 to 300 micrograms per deciliter this is the easiest to remember i think it's 20 to 300 micrograms per deciliter and then as you could notice here all of them use micrograms per deciliter except for percent transparent saturation okay it tells you right there it's percent transparent saturation so the unit here is at percent and that's it. Let's go back to our regular programming. So iron studies. And then we'll also have to remember some trivia questions for iron because sometimes these pop up. So you have to remember that out of the iron that you consume in your diet, only 5 to 10% is absorbed by the body. Okay, so if you have, you know, your, your steak is rich in iron, only 10%, 5 to 10% of that iron truly gets absorbed into your body. So for adults, our total iron body content is between 3,500 to 4,000 milligrams. And then lastly, two-thirds of that iron in our body is found in hemoglobin, or they say hemoglobin iron because it's being used for our hemoglobin. And then one-third of that iron is sent to storage in the bone marrow, liver, and spleen. And 90% is stored as ferritin. So in iron deficiency anemia, again, everything is down except for the TIBC and the transferrin receptor. And there is no ferritin in the bone marrow. So those are the three things that you want to remember for iron deficiency anemia. Everything is down except for the TIBC, total iron binding capacity. So you have a lot of transferrin because your body thinks you're just not making enough transferrin. That's why there's no iron in your stores. but in all honesty, you just don't have iron in your body. So that's why TIBC is up. And also same as the transferrin receptor because it wants iron to go into the RBC if there's any iron at all. So it also ramps up the amount of transferrin receptors in your body. These are all compensation reaction by the body. That's why these things are increased. And so, but then there is no ferritin in your bone marrow. No ferritin. So that's the things that you have to remember for IDA. So for IDA, TIBC, TFR up, and zero ferritin or no ferritin. So let's move on. So for anemia of chronic disease, iron is low, but ferritin is high. So that's the difference between anemia of chronic disease and iron deficiency anemia. Because in anemia of chronic disease, you don't have iron, but it's stored. It's actually in your storage. The ferritin is actually high so that separates the two what separates them from sideroblastic and hh is they they don't have iron in their plasma because remember in anemia of chronic disease 
there is a problem between transferring storage iron into the production of hemoglobin or in the erythroid precursors. So you have iron but it's just there's a disconnect between using that iron into your hemoglobin erythroid production. So between sideroblastic and hereditary hemochromatosis, they're kind of similar in iron studies. But the only difference is that sideroblastic anemia mentions ringed sideroblast. Because <laughs> their iron studies are kind of similar. Because, you know, sideroblastic anemia creates an excess of iron and hereditary hemochromatosis is the disorder in which, you know, there's an excess in iron that's damaging your tissues. So they're really similar. And so their iron studies are also similar. Except for ringed sideroblast. If they mention ringed sideroblast, then you know it's sideroblastic anemia. So there's an increase in iron, increased ferritin, and transferrin saturation. Percent saturation. Transferrin percent saturation. <laughs> I really struggle with this phrase. I don't know why. So remember I also mentioned um, when I filmed the hereditary hemochromatosis that the transferrin percent saturation is actually a hallmark of the disease. So for females, if it's greater than 50%, and for males, if it's greater than 60%, then the patient most likely has hereditary hemochromatosis. So I just want to mention really quickly that I uploaded a flowchart on my website. And this is about the video today. It's about classifying hypochromic anemias. And um, in this graphic, you can see what you would do if you're given a CBC on a case study and what to do with that information. So yeah, so it says here if MCV, MCH, MCHC is low, does it have aniso and poikilocytosis, ring sideroblast, and if the answer is yes, but no sideroblast, it's iron deficiency anemia. If there's ring sideroblast, it's sideroblastic anemia. And if there's none of those things, it's anemia of chronic disease. And important to note that it also will mention a chronic disease and that is your keyword for anemia of chronic disease. And then it just goes on. And then another way of differentiating these anemias is the iron studies. So I made a separate flowchart for that. And here you see that it starts with the serum iron. And I also included the normal range here. If it's decreased or increased. If it's decreased, you go further and look into the ferritin. And here's the normal range if it's decreased or increased. So if it has decreased serum iron and increased ferritin, guess what? It's anemia of chronic disease. Now if your serum iron is decreased and your ferritin is also decreased, you get iron deficiency anemia. And so on the other side of things, if serum iron is increased, you have to differentiate it further by asking if there are sideroblasts present. If there are, then it's sideroblastic anemia, and if there's none, it's hereditary hemochromatosis. So the hallmark diagnosis is the percent transfer and saturation at greater than 60% and women greater than 50%. That's it. And I also included the trivia information about iron here at the end, so check that out. And that's it. That's the end of our cramming session today. It's very quick because it's a cramming session and I just picked out on keywords that should stick out to you when you're, you know, when you're having an exam and if there is a like a case study, what are the things you should look out for? And that's that. So hopefully that helps you memorize some things and that's it. So thank you for watching today. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe for more hematology and study buddy contents. Thank you for watching today and that's it. Bye!